Hello, everyone, and welcome to this CAN Solutions America webinar. This is part of our Presco Business Development Program that's been designed to help you succeed with Canon and OSE Digital Printing Solutions. This is a listen-only webinar. However, we encourage you to ask your questions. You may do so by just typing a question in that Ask a Question box that you see on your screen. If you'd like a copy of today's presentation, you can download it now. You'll see a dark green icon on the bottom of your screen that will allow you to do that. You'll see additional icons that allow you to do things like view the presenter's profile, email us, or even share your attendance today via social media networks. Today we welcome back Barb Pello. She's one of our most trusted go-to people at InfoTrends, and she's here to talk about how you can turn process into profit with transactional printing. Welcome, Barb. Well, thank you very much, Kim, and I'm delighted that all of you could join us today. And I'm going to talk to you about how you turn process into profit. And basically what everybody wants to be able to do is make the most of those transactional documents by using the white space on them to deliver targeted messages. You want to demonstrate that you have extensive knowledge about the customer, and you want to make sure that you're delivering relevant offers. Um, you also want to make sure that you're instilling and providing great calls to action. And oh, by the way, those transaction documents get opened and viewed by consumers, so they become an integral part of your overall marketing efforts. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk to you about First of all, some of the market drivers for trans-promotional applications, including return on investment, how to do a better job at reaching consumers, and the implications that it's got for overall reduction in your operating costs. We'll talk about how to leverage some of the emerging technologies and then what it all means to your bottom line. One of the things that InfoTrends does is we do a significant number of market forecast type activities. And every year we do an application forecast. And we take a look at the highest growth areas in the marketplace. And what we looked at is if you take a look at the trans-promotional side of the market, it's projected to grow by more than 20 billion digital pages between now and 2016. From an overall percentage perspective, what we'll see is the transaction market, the trans-promo market, is projecting high growth in terms of overall percentage growth, and it's projected to grow at a 30% compound annual growth rate. And there's a lot of good reasons for that. In an environment where marketing costs are under scrutiny, it's very, very important to partner with that chief marketing officer. Um, every year, Spencer Stewart does a study, and while the tenure of the CMO has gone up, it's still only 45 months. And what the CMOs communicated in the Spencer Stewart study was that they're being asked to do things they've never been asked to do before. They're having trouble keeping uh, pace with the expect expected changes in technologies. They're being asked to do more with things like marketing automation and database analytics. And they really want tools, techniques, and partners that are going to help them in terms of driving sales activity. And so as a service provider, I tell everybody that you should be able to use that trans-promotional document or that transaction document to help that marketing executive do a better job at reaching his customer, getting an integrated view of that customer, compressing that campaign design through execution cycle, blending that transaction document with migrating the customer to online, social, and mobile channels, measuring and monitoring results, and ultimately, delivering a return on investment for every marketing dollar that they spend. Now, when we think about the market today, consumers are in control of the media that they actually experience. And so what you have to do if you're a, a marketer or if you're that service provider for the marketing executive is give them techniques and tactics to cut through the clutter. Believe it or not, the average person is hit with over 5,000 marketing messages every day. And so what you've got to look at is, how do I make sure that my client's message pops? And that's where we see transaction documents coming in. Transaction documents are clearly those legally relevant documents that are printed, inserted, and mailed, or electronically presented. And they consist of a mixture of fixed and variable data. 
these documents are usually created by organizations through their financial systems or in other, in other instances, some of their electronic billing systems. And so you're looking at bills, bank statements, insurance policies, notices, other legally um, relevant documents. Now, InfoTrends just completed a study, and we actually went out and talked to more than 2,000 consumers. And we asked them what transaction documents they get on a regular basis. And clearly they get their financial statements, they're getting utility statements, cable bills, mobile phone bills, credit card uh, bills, insurance, health care information. And in fact, the average consumer today, well, you may find this hard to believe, actually receives an average of 7.8 bills or statements a month. The big component with transactional documents is that they get read. The average consumer spend somewhere between 4 and 6.8 minutes reviewing that printed transaction document. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see the kinds of documents that they're spending time looking at and the amount of time based on the specific type of document. But that message is an important one in terms of how do I get more for my money from that transaction document. And it says that I should be able to use it as a dual purpose piece of communication. Not only should I be able to communicate information about their checking or savings account or their investment funds, but I should be able to use that to cross sell, upsell, and resell customers. And so what you want to be able to do is really use that transaction document and leverage the touch point. That statement that bill, that invoice, or that notification is an important customer touch point. And what you need to do is educate the marketers that depending upon the complexity of that product or service, you can leverage that transaction document as a, as a critical touch point to build a closer relationship with the customer. You also have to keep in mind that given that transaction documents are delivered to customers every month and they actually read them, that it's time to do the right job with that touch point. And so what you want to be able to do is you really want to use that transaction document to manage that customer relationship life cycle. First, you want to use it to retain your loyal customers. If I'm a loyal customer of, of Lord & Taylor, I want to be able to make sure that I blend with that statement special offers or coupons that I can just merely tear off my bill or my statement. It instills loyalty and it directs me back to the store. I want to use that transaction document to increase revenues by expanding the relationship. If I'm in buying one investment fund from a specific uh, uh, firm, maybe what I want to do is educate that consumer on other funds that would yield high returns for them. And last but not least, we're finding that statements are being used via social media. What I might do is put a special offer on the statement linked to a URL, and I can pass that offer to my friends via my social networks. There are a number of tools uh, ranging from a tool called Ducky, D-U-K-K-Y, to another one called Social Twist and Amplifinity. And what we're finding are that financial institutions especially are using those tools to get their loyal existing customers to refer friends and um, and associates, and they're rewarding those customers for referrals. And so what I tell everybody is what you want to do is you want to get rid of those bang tail envelopes, and you want to also get rid of the inserts that never get read, and you want to migrate your customers to an insert because the insert is what works, and that's that messaging that you're printing right on the face of the document that the customer will actually see. Now, we asked consumers why the statement or the bill was important. And what they told us was they like paper. And what they said is, first of all, in a lot of instances, it's a great reminder to pay. If I've forgotten to automatically set up deductions from my checking account, I might actually miss that specific bill or statement. People like the printed statement as a backup or an archive. In a lot of instances, it's a personal preference, convenience, easy to manage. So all of those are important if I'm dealing with that consumer. 
the other question that we asked consumers was, how can the provider enhance the value of that statement? And basically what they said is, make them simple to understand. And what that says is, I really do need to redesign statements so that they're easy to read. They want to personalized content, that content that was just for them. And oh, by the way, they like color. And they wanted the provider, or the, the company that was sending the statement, to make sure that they use color to emphasize the important information. So those statements have huge market value. But I also tell folks that you need to look at the statement as a source of saving money for your organization. And the first thing is if I blend them with marketing information, I can reduce my printing costs because I've consolidated mailings. As opposed to sending out coupons in one pack and a statement in another mail pack, what I should be able to do is integrate the two into a single package to reduce my overall printing costs. In, a, in parallel with that, I'll reduce my postage costs. What we're finding is that if you do a good job at the communications in a statement, and that means adding personal information, adding color, what we're finding is that it reduces the number of call center calls that are made, both in terms of the overall number of calls as well as the duration of those calls. And finally, a lot of people are using that printed statement to encourage customers to participate in e-presentment. And so it becomes a mechanism to move people to other channels for a relationship. And so what we're seeing is that what you want to be able to do is work in the realm of transpomo, promo. What you want to be able to do is aggregate retention-oriented direct mail with transaction documents. It's going to offer tremendous cost savings in terms of print costs and postage. And you can take that one statement, at marketing messaging, and get a much more cost-effective customer communications document. Now, the other thing that we're seeing is that clearly if I consolidate mail, I'm going to reduce my postal costs. The other piece that you've got to keep in mind is that the USPS has continued their second ounce rides free promotion in 2013. And what that means is that pre-sorted first class letter size mail pieces weighing under two ounces will be continue, to, continue to be charged at the under one ounce rate. Last but not least, what they've done is they've, in essence, and it's running through September 30th, encouraged you to use emerging technologies um, for interactive mail. And so what they'll do is they'll look at you and provide discounts if you're using augmented reality. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with augmented reality, basically what it does is it lets you merge what I categorize as the physical and digital worlds. And what I can do is I can overlay um, codes on a printed piece, and when I point at it with my cell phone, the actual image will come to life. I can integrate sound, video, graphics, or GPS data. Um, we're also seeing the fact that um, if I do a good job at the authentication component, which says that I'm verifying the unique customer using a combination of authentication factors, at least two, I'll get a reduced rate. And last but not least, we're getting encouraged by the USPS to use near-field communications, or NFC tags. And what an NFC tag is, is it's basically got sensors in it so that when I get my cell phone within three centimeters, it will actually link me to a website, to a mobile landing page, any number of different um, uh, uh, locations from a mobile device. And so the Postal Service wants to encourage all of you to add value to mail. Now, the other component is that transaction documents are critical to the post-sales communications. What, what we're finding is that the majority of client care calls are stimulated by a communication sent by a company to the client. And oh, by the way, one of those is the bill or the statement. When you want to get post-sale clients to take action or inform them of changes, that transaction document is an extremely effective mechanism. And so what you want to make sure you're doing is creating a document that does a good job at highlighting very specifically what action that consumer needs to take. If there's a change in hours of service, the transaction document can be used to notify clients. 
if I'm a healthcare company and there's a generic drug available at a lower cost, that healthcare insurer can use this statement to build awareness. Um, we have one healthcare provider that we're doing a lot of work with where if you've been diagnosed with, let's say, diabetes, what they've done is they've used that healthcare uh, statement to provide information on preventative measures that the diabetic can take. And if there's a change in insurance coverage or benefits, the statement is an ideal mechanism to get that messaging across. Now, if you do it well and you do it effectively, what that says is that I'm going to reduce the calls to the call center. I probably will have a very explicit question so the duration of that call goes down. What I've got is, is a reduction in payment collection and processing costs. Typically, that means that my operations costs go down and I increase profitability. And oh, by the way, if I've done it right, my customer satisfaction should go up because I be, am perceived as a company that's easy to do business with. Now, the other component is that when I take a look at these transaction documents, I need to look at the fact that A, they deliver marketing effectiveness, but B, I'm going to reduce my cost. I'm going to reduce my cost through consolidation, through reduced postage costs for the second ounce, reduced costs if I leverage emerging technology, and then I'm obviously reducing my call center expenditures. Now, the next component is how do I leverage emerging technologies? One of the more interesting findings that we had when we surveyed a number of your peers in the industry is that um, corporate enterprises, believe it or not, average three types of media, use of three types of media to engage customers. The big message inside of the findings, though, was that your peers in the industry um, are using that printed document to link into online or digital channels. And in fact, 47% of all printed material produced in the past 12 months points a client at a digital channel. Now, when we asked them which, which printed documents they were using to move people across channels, bills or statements was clearly a critical component in terms of moving people to online channels. Now, the digital channels that they linked to included a number of different components, websites, social media sites, a mobile app, um, all critical in terms of that transaction document. And why they blend media channels? Well, first of all, it was to reach a broader audience, to reach that target demographic. And I think we all know that that 18 to 34-year-old age group has never known the world without a PC or a cell phone within uh, a few inches of reach, and to boost response rates. Now, when we talk about making print interactive, what we're seeing are really four critical types of, of media that will make that print interactive. I want to talk about each of them. The first is mobile codes. The second is mobile messaging or texting. The third is near-field communications or NFC tags. And the last is augmented reality. Now, we did a study of consumers two years ago. We asked the same question, which is, are you familiar with mobile barcodes, and have you interacted with them? The first big message is that people, more than 80%, are familiar with mobile barcodes. The more compelling message in the most recent data that we gathered is that the interaction with mobile barcodes has almost doubled in the last 24 months. And when you look at why people interact with that mobile barcode, it's typically, typically to gather additional information or secondarily to access a coupon or a discount. When I think about that statement, think about the importance of taking maybe that QR code and linking it to a video where you can get a lot more information across to that end consumer. It might be changes in healthcare coverage. It might be changes in their auto policy. But I can do that with video, and that's very, very important when you think about adding information without having to add a lot of text into that transaction document. Now this is just an example where we're seeing QR codes used. And in this specific example, what we're seeing is um, an individual 
where I can get additional information about some type of, of disease or issue that I have from a personal perspective. Now, the next key area is something called um, augmented reality. And again, an uptick in terms of awareness and familiarity, um, but a major or significant increase in terms of interaction with an augmented reality code. Now, let me spend a second describing augmented reality. Um, and it's a little harder to describe than without having a video in here. I probably should have put one in, but sometimes these web-based systems aren't quite as user-friendly on videos. Um, but basically what happens is I'll embed a tag on a document. When I point my cell phone at it, that document can pop to life. I was at a friend's house a couple of weeks ago, and she had a five-year-old that was playing a game on the back of a cereal box with her cell phone. And basically, he was moving a marble through a maze. That was all done with augmented reality technology. My funny story about that is when the cereal box is empty and the little kid likes the game, he's going to ask mommy for that same type of cereal. Well, I can do something very similar with a transaction document, and I can take a tag and I can embed video in it, I can embed any number of things. I do have to download a reader to take advantage of that specific application. Now, one of my favorite examples, and I think we're all familiar with IKEA, is IKEA used augmented reality in its catalog. And basically what I can do is I can take uh, and point at an image in the IKEA catalog. I can then overlay that image into my living room to see how a specific piece of furniture would actually look in my home. So very, very powerful technology in today's market. The next component is what we categorize as near field communications. A number of you, if you've got a droid uh, type phone, have actually got an NFC reader embedded in that phone. Our view is that ultimately NFC tags will probably displace quick response codes. Basically what it is, it's a technology for a seamless, seamless experience for marketers and their audiences to prove offline and online engagement. What happens is an NFC tag can be affixed to any document with a sticker and can be any substrate, any surface. Um, now, the best use I've seen has been in New York City. And I watched somebody in a transit shelter. And what they did is it's a touch and tap technology. So if I have a droid phone and I wave it in front of a tag, it will immediately link me without having to do anything other than touch the tag to a website, to a mobile app, whatever that might be. In the transit shelter in New York City, what happened was I was watching this person waiting for their bus. They were touching and tapping a poster. And what happened was the poster was for a local restaurant. It linked them to the menu where they could select the items that they wanted to pick up at dinner that evening, indicate what time they picked them up, punch in their American Express card, and make sure that dinner was ready for pickup on their way home. Now, the projections are that by the time we get to 2015, there will be more than a billion, a billion NFC-enabled phones. Right now, Apple phones, iPhones, are not NFC-enabled. Our view is that that will happen, and it will happen quickly. Now, how do I engage in this? Believe it or not, if you want to do NFC tags, you can order them over the Internet. Um, our view is ultimately the vendors, just like they've done with Micro, will figure out how to print an NFC tag during the production process. Um, and it explains to you on any of these websites how to program the NFC tags. One of the best uses I've seen was in a magazine called Mary Claire. And there was a health club in U the UK called Nuffield. And what they did is they embedded an NFC tag in the magazine you could tap and touch it, and you could download, as a result of tapping and touching and opting in, two free day passes to the health club. Pretty good offer, pretty powerful in terms of response rates. And in fact, they got almost a 60% response rate in terms of um, leveraging the NFC tags. Now, when you look at it and you look at bringing it to the bottom line, what we're seeing are a number of companies that are getting in the game. 
whether it's FSSI or it's the NRB group, and they're leveraging things like high-speed inkjet technology to deliver a whole set of advanced products and services to their customer base. So when you take a look at the market today, and again, if you've got questions, please key them in. What I tell everybody is that leveraging the trans promo document and the transaction document is worth a lot of dollars and cents to your customers. First of all, it enhances the marketing experience, and secondly, it reduces operational costs. And so it's really time to blend digital print and marketing messaging with the transaction documents. That transaction document gets opened by the consumer. They look at it for somewhere between 4 and 6.8 minutes. It's a way to cut through the clutter in a very complex media environment. The CMOs are under continued pressure to do more with less. And what you're finding is that transaction documents need to go in the mail anyway. Why not optimize that customer touch point? It's also an ideal mechanism for moving your customers across channels and engaging them in a multi-channel conversation. It helps you in terms of supporting your operational objectives. I don't think there's anybody or any one of your customers that isn't interested in reducing costs, whether it's postage or whether it's the call center. It's a way of moving clients into an electronic relationship with you, and you can affordably integrate color and personalization that's going to yield improved business results. And the software and the equipment technology are readily available and becoming more and more affordable for your customer base. So with that, I would like to open it up and ask if anyone has any questions, please feel free to cue them in. And I know Kim will direct them to me. And uh, so I'm going to ask Kim any questions from the audience. Barb, I don't see any, as you know. We had a couple that were submitted ahead of time, and you've answered those in your presentation. So I think we're in good shape. I would just like to thank you all for attending this, this webinar, and really a special thanks to you, Barb. Great information. Uh, for those of you on the line, if you'd like to view this presentation again or share it with your peers, you will receive an email tomorrow. That will include an on-demand link. And you'll also be able to access this presentation by the end of the week on the Presto website at mypresto.com. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day.